Hey guys, how's it going? I welcome you to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kelly. I'm a graphic designer and apparently I'm also a YouTuber. If you're coming back, thanks for coming back. How's it going? Today, we're gonna be talking about something that I'm very passionate about and that, my friend, is fonts. <laughs> slash typefaces, depending on how pretentious you are as a designer. So, now, a quick disclaimer before we jump into this video all about fonts, is the difference between a font and a typeface. Now, I just like have colloquially used the word font when I'm referring to type, and I know that is technically wrong. I'm aware of that, so calm your pants if you're going down into the comments to yell at me about it. I Hold your horses. Hold chill i know <laughs> but real quick for anyone who might not understand the difference between a font and a typeface so <laughs> wikipedia says the distinction between a font and a typeface is that a font designates a specific member of a type family such as roman boldface or italic type while a typeface designates a consistent visual appearance or style which can be a family or related set of fonts now they kind of overlap there are a bit of a blurred line so don't come for me i know i know i'm misspeaking but fonts is just what I, I can't I can't get it out of me so I apologize but also don't get hung up on semantics like that don't be mean to each other so all of the fonts that I'm gonna be talking about today I'm like 99% sure yeah all of the fonts that I'm gonna be talking about today are available through Adobe fonts and that means that if you have the full Adobe subscription so I pay for the full service so I have access to all of the programs I pay a monthly fee and I have access to Adobe Fonts, formerly known as Typekit. Now, when I log into adobefonts.com, it should automatically sync to like your desktop if you're new to using it. And just sign in, it should sync everything. And you have access to thousands of fonts that are fully licensed for you to use, for li like for personal or commercial use, which is super awesome because that's a really difficult part with a lot of fonts is the licensing because you wanna make sure people are getting paid for using their work. So yeah, definitely use Adobe Fonts. I know a lot of designers who don't use Adobe Fonts, which is, is fine, to each their own, but it's a service that is not free, but it is included with your Adobe subscription. So definitely do use that. And all of these fonts that I'm mentioning today, I will leave a list down in the description box below if you want to check out any of them. And I will also link Adobe fonts if you haven't checked it out already. Um, little brief background to fonts typefaces. They've been around pretty much since the invention of the printing press, which is pretty awesome. So that's a couple hundred years. I should know, but I don't. So fonts type in general are a huge part of graphic design. I am very passionate about that. Them, and I have a lot of feelings and opinions towards a lot of fonts, so I thought I would share my top favorite fonts with you guys, what I love about them, how I use them, pretty much all that. This is a very niche topic, I understand that, but uh, that's what you're gonna get on my channel. Anyway, that wine sucks. <laughs> So I broke this down into five different categories. I have serif, sans serif, anything that's like scripty, cursive, handwritten type of stuff, uh, slab serif, and any sort of decorative font that might not fit into any of those categories specifically, but they're still really fun fonts and I wanna give them kind of like an honorable mention. So that's how we're gonna do it. If you are new to my channel, I invite you to subscribe down below. I do have a Patreon. If you do wanna contribute to my Patreon, I will also link that down below. So without further ado, let's get chatting about some freaking fonts. So the first set of fonts that we're gonna start off with are serifs. So a serif is technically, and I will Google this. I can explain this, but I wanna Google it so it's a little bit more clear because I'm not very good at explaining things. So technically a serif is a small decorative line added as an embellishment to the basic form of a character. So pretty much a letter has a little leg, a little foot thing at the bottom or at the top or like in the middle of the letter, depending on the shape of it. And I like to think of them as like stability, legs um, it helps like the letter prop themselves up. That's how I've always thought of it. I don't know why, but that is a serif. So the most common like serif font is probably a Times New Roman, which is probably what more people are familiar with. So we're gonna dive into some serifs real quick. Let's go. All right, so the first serif on my list is Bartelli's. I don't know if I'm saying this right, but this is a font that I've used for probably like the past year. I think it's an awesome like retro Italian style font. It's great for like headers if you wanna use it as like a single word or as a subheader and just like a short line. This is not a good body copy font. So you want it to kind of stand out on its own and pair it with another sans serif font to keep it clean. And when I say a body copy font, that is something that 
looks good when it's written out in a paragraph. Not all fonts look good when they're written out in a paragraph. It's hard for the eyes to follow the direction of the lines. It's not easy to read. It kind of just like, it might have too many little flares on the letters that kind of confuse your eyes. So that's what I mean by body copy. Next, I have Ben Griot. Again, don't know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> Big fat disclaimer in this video, I'm probably butchering a lot of these words, but they're like words that I've been saying in my head for years. And I think like, oh, it's said like this, but it's probably, there's a good chance that it's completely not said like that. But this next font is Benguiat. This is an awesome, really thick serif font. It is like more commonly known as the one used in the Stranger Things logo. It is retro, it is bold, it is thick. It has a few different variations in the font family, but overall a great headline font, a great just like title font, anything. Next we have Ono Blaze Face, which is kind of a fun font. How do I even describe this one? This one is super retro, it's bold. All of my serifs, I just generally tend to lean on the more bold side, but Ono oh Blaze Face I use all the time in my designs at work. It's just, it has such a powerful like retro essence that I think it's great for like a single or a few words. That's about it. This next one is Mascalero, which I use all the time. I think this is kind of like a Japanese style font. It has a ton of font variations within the family and you can have everything from like a really thin, a thin standard font all the way up to a super super bold italic font. It has so many variations within the font family. It's super awesome and I use it all the time. <laughs> Next, I wanted to throw in another one that is a little bit out of character for the rest of these fonts, but I'm gonna talk about Birch. Now, this is a great condensed serif font. This is also great for titles. I would not use this as like a subheader or anything for body copy because it is a condensed font, so it is hard on the eyes to read. So generally you wanna put as few words in a font like this as possible just so it's easy for a viewer to read it. So Birch is a pretty retro font. It's really clean and crisp and I think it has that artisan feel that's like good for like a bakery branding or something. So, okay, moving on. So next we're moving on to sans serif fonts. These are probably like the general, like in the design community, probably the go-to favorite font family. Not font family, but like genre of fonts. These are the more modern classic fonts that like you see a ton of brands using right now. Um, so sans serif is just any, like it's just any font typeface that doesn't have the little strokes or serifs at the end of the letters. So these are like the really clean or modular fonts that don't have the little leggy things or the little feetsy things, if you will. So my first favorite sans serif font is Poplar. Now this is a thick, condensed, bold font that I think has a ton of attitude. It makes awesome logos just for really simple, like maybe one or two words, an awesome title font. It pairs well with a lot of serif fonts. It's just, it's a great go-to. I use it when I need something that I, I need it to be tall and thick, but it can also fill out a lot of space in an area. So which is what makes it pretty much a pretty nice title font. This next one is Gitan. Now this is, I in my head, I imagine this as more of like a Japanese influence font. It's semi-retro. It makes some really nice like subheader copy. So it looks nice like typed out in like a sentence or two. I probably would veer away from this for body copy. So I would keep it relatively on the short side, but I think it's awesome for a few words or maybe even like a single letter because it has a lot of these like varying widths just in each of the letters. So. Next, I have one of my most frequently used, which is titling Gothic. I don't have any Gothams in this entire collection because I try to veer on more of the artisanal side of the fonts that I use. So I do land into the Gothic family. So titling Gothic is similar to Poplar in the sense that it's a heavyweight font that has a bunch of different variations within the font family. So titling Gothic is similar to Poplar in the sense that I would use it to fill out a nice title space where I need it to be bold and thick and easy to read, but also it can take up a little bit of width because I have so many variations within that font family. Next, I have Gopher. This is one of my all time favorite fonts. I like to think of Gopher as like a sans serif mascalero. So it has that similar like kind of waving width where it's like it gets kind of not really thin, like a, what's that font? What is the Vogue font? Why is my brain Vogue font? <laughs> 
Oh, Dido, I'm an idiot. So it doesn't have a varying width like Dido does, but it does get like pretty thin, but it will get like nice and thick again, but it won't get too thick. So it has like that pretty happy medium of like a varying width within the font. And it's just like, it's an awesome font. So I use it all the time. It makes great subheader copy, but also like a single word, like a, a title case. So it has a capital letter and then a bunch of lowercase letters. I think that's when Gopher looks the best. Next I have Nazair or Nazair. Who knows? This also falls into the Mascalero Gopher family where it is kind of like this really edgy Japanese style font where it does have like these varying widths and it, it's also kind of like a sans serif version of Mascalero. It's an awesome font. I use it all the time. Wow. She's a beauty. Next, we are moving on to like script cursive hand lettering. I just threw all of these into the same category because I didn't really want to necessarily break them out. And also I don't love this category of fonts or typefaces that much. I generally stay away from them in my design because I'm yet to really find a font that is a script cursive hand lettering, whatever that I'm really happy with. So these are the five that I use, probably like the only five that I use depending on what I'm working on and if I have to use something like this. And depending on the project that I'm working on, I might just end up hand lettering something on my own because I do write in cursive and I can do some pretty cool things with hand lettering. So my first favorite one is Serena. Now this is a pretty retro heavy scripted font. It has a lot of attitude. It makes a great single word title. It makes awesome logos. Uh, that's pretty much it. She's great. Next, I have Voltage. This is another retro style font. Wow, I'm saying retro a lot. Get something new, Kelly. Awesome title font, cool for logos. Next, I have Coquette, which I use with my Folgers logo if you watch my coffee redesigning video. It's an awesome font. You have a lot of flexibility in it, and I think it looks really, really great with logos because you get that kind of like mid-century retro feel. Then I have Yellowtail. I've used this for quite a few logos in the past. I think it's a pretty safe script font. Um, the only thing I don't like about this font is that the E is like a capital E. So if I do end up using it for a logo, I will remove that E and then redraw an E that looks in like a similar style to the rest of Yellowtail. Next, we're moving on to my favorite category, which are slab serifs. Now, let me technically look up the definition for this slab serif because this is kind of like a running joke within the design community, exactly like where does a heavyweight serif become a slab serif? So Wikipedia defines a slab serif as a typeface characterized by thick block-like serifs. So I, in my opinion, I would categorize a slab serif when it has legs or feet that become like the focal point of the type. So when I look at a font and my eyes go right toward like these thick, bold blocks at like the edges of the letters, at the top, bottom, in the middle. When my eyes go to that and the weight is already pretty heavy on the font, I think that's where it kind of falls into the slab serif territory. So slab serifs are great for anything that's a title, logo. These are not friendly for body copy use. You could kind of get away with them for like a subheader. But the great thing about a lot of slab serifs is generally they can come in a lighter weight, but the slab is still very prominent in the type. So you can get away with like something that's like a light to a medium weight slab serif and still use that as like a subheader without it being too heavy or bulky unless that's the look that you're going for. So my first one on the list is Summit Slab. Now this is kind of like a retro, I think it's really clean and like when I look at it, I think of like a mom and pop kitchen brand. It's super friendly and bright. I see it being paired with like some reds and peaches. And I just, when I think of like Summit Slab, it's definitely a very friendly, Font. Next, they have Campaign Slab. This one has a little bit more attitude. I see more designers and kind of like the edgier side of the community using this for a lot of really awesome posters and like postcards. It's a super, super bold font. It has a lot of attitude and I think it looks awesome when it's typed out and kind of like the letting is really small and it's all scrunched together. I think this looks awesome. And same thing with the tracking. You squish it all together. Just, I think it looks really awesome. Next, I have Henderson Slab. This is another really friendly, 
approachable slab serif that looks awesome in headlines. And I would probably wouldn't use this for a logo. I haven't used it for a logo yet, but I think it's awesome for any sort of titles and you can even use this for a subheader. Next, I have Trilby. This one, when I look at Trilby, I think of like an old West type of font, but it still has like a relatively modern feel. You have to kind of pair it with the right colors for it to really look a little bit more modern because I think it will still start to look a little Western-y, but I think in the right circumstances, it can be really awesome. <laughs> Next, I have a pretty wide slab serif and that is Hellenic Wide. Now this one is awesome. I haven't used this one too much, but I always like try to work it into a design, but it doesn't always work, but I still think it's a really unique slab serif. It's not too heavy with the weights, but it does have a lot of attitude and I think it would look really awesome like as an oversized type in like a magazine as a, a title or even a subheader because it is on the lighter weight side. Now this final fun category, which is the decorative fonts. I didn't know how else to describe these, so they're just being called decorative. First on this list, I have Polino or Poleno. Poleno is a font that I've used in my recent Greta Thunberg poster that I will put here that I think is super impactful. It's kind of, it looks like it's cut out of paper for all of the letters, which I think is really awesome because you get that hand done feel. It's an awesome like title. Anything you want bold and screamed, I go to Polino, Poleno. Next I have Womp which I've used a few times in my designs. It's a crazy font. I don't use it for anything that has more than like four or five letters of what I'm, it's actually gonna be used for um, because it's such a crazy font. The swashes on this font can get a bit nuts. Like even on the H, it's pretty dramatic and like the H and M in just Womp have a lot of attitude. So if I am using them, sometimes I will trim them up to make it just a little bit more legible, but it's a crazy font. I love it. I love the attitude. Whatever. Next on this list is one that I never thought I would find on Adobe Fonts. It looks like something that I would find on Defont.com. No shade to Defont.com because you got me here, but I don't use Defont anymore. But it's this font called Rad and it's literally a bunch of skateboarders as letters, which I think is pretty awesome. I haven't really used this too much in my designs because it is a very specific font that has to be used for the right person, the right musician, band, artist, brand, whatever. It's very specific. It's not for everyone, but I think it's awesome and bizarre and it's just these skateboarder dudes doing letters. So it's funny, I love it. Next I have Totally Gothic. I think this font has a ton of like uniqueness to it. It looks really kind of like, when you think of the more like hip hop slash like edgy SoundCloud rap art, I think of a font like totally gothic because it is kind of more on that edgier side where you can do a lot with this font to either make it a little bit more friendly, but you can also take it really, really far and stylize the heck out of it. So finally, I have Blenny. I use this all the time for artists who are a little bit more on the retro side. So it has these really tight spaces just like in the letters and in between the letters. The tracking on this is generally pretty close, but I do think it's an awesome font because you get so much movement within the letters. You have so much space within the letters to like potentially do something else with. So I'm, if I'm like working with this, I can still do like an offset path and create some depth within the letters. So super retro. It's like, it teeters between like a fifties font and also like completely like a late seventies font. So yeah. All right, guys, that is it. Those were my 24 favorite fonts. I'm always adding to my list, and so it was really fun to pull all of these together because I haven't really thought about all of the fonts that I use the most. Now, are these necessarily the ones I use the most? Maybe, maybe not, but they are definitely my favorites. I always try to work these into my designs if it does work, but I think they're awesome. I love, love, love typefaces. I love font families, everything about them. I love just like exploring them and finding new ones. Finding a new font, is is just like, it's the most exhilarating feeling. It's like finding like a new band or something. Like it's, I don't know, it's a new thing you get to work into your daily life if you're a designer. And I, I'm always really excited to find a cool font. So if you have a cool font that you think I'd like, I hope this kind of like put together a little bit of a mood board of like the type that I do enjoy. Definitely leave a comment down below and where I could find the font or link it if you can, cause that would be super awesome. And then other people can also download it if they would like. If you are a font fanatic like me, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and if you would like, become a patron over on my Patreon. My Patreon supporters have been awesome so far, so thank you guys. That's so kind of you for your generous donations. You guys are super awesome. I cannot thank you enough. Keeping me going. And I wanna thank you guys for your patience. Your packages and your letters 
will be out by the time that you see this video. I've been working on getting a PO box together, so that's been a little complicated, but I thank you for your patience. You guys are awesome. And yes, I will have more merch coming in the future. I don't have too many ideas yet, but I do wanna work on some stuff that is really cool. So I will keep you guys posted on that. I hope you enjoyed this very niche and specific font video. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you enjoyed watching this video and you want to see more type related videos or any design related videos from me, make sure you hit the like button down below if you did enjoy. And uh, I have some pretty exciting design videos coming soon. I'm really excited to be setting up in our new apartment. I'm at my kitchen table right now, which is not where I'm going to be filming. Um, but until I finish setting up my desk, that's where I will be filming the rest of my videos. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. Thank you so much for all of your kind words and support over all of these crazy few months that we've been through. Yeah, that as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys. Gus, do you want to come in the video? Gus, no, Gus, no. Gus, come back. Gus left. <laughs>